This is the last of what I had stored on my hard drive when I ran out of space. So some of these clips will be older. I will be taking a semi-break from the monkeys in Angkor. This is because I want to put my focus on some other topics that I think could be informative or could bring awareness. If any of these clips were sent to me, thank you to those who have sent me these. So you are about to see Lucy while unusually sleepy. I say unusual because I do not believe this is a baby monkey being sleepy in a normal way. Her eyes are glossy and droopy. She's struggling to keep them open. Even if this were to be normal tiredness, where is Luna? She wouldn't leave her baby like this. I've shown many examples of them refusing Luna her baby. It is one of the most cruel human interferences they can do to primates. To separate the mother from their baby gives both mother and baby psychological distress and triggers abnormal behaviors to occur, reoccur, or make existing abnormal behaviors more severe. Sadly, it's now happening all over again with Libby as well. I'm blurring useless watermarks. Clearly, these lazy ass people doesn't want to film where the monkey wants to go or let the monkey do what they want to do. Nor do they want to leave these monkeys alone. You can hear them call Luna over like she's a dog. Her startled reaction to a VO is evident to me that she's been punished before for wanting to run away. If only these dimwits would realize that people don't want to see this and how much money they could make had they just stopped exploiting these animals and only recorded from a distance and left these animals alone and at peace to do what they want. They wouldn't even have to click bait, lie, or interfere in any way. You will see they scared off Luna and you will hear slings as Libby tries to protect Lucy. They're trying to keep Lucy with Libby without Luna for their video and to, of course, make Luna into looking like a bad mom. You will also hear a VO call out to Luna in a voice that sounds like a, how can I put this without offending someone or breaking TOS? He sounds like an inebriated old man who once had a stroke, limping with a cane while he goes after a monkey, and is short of breath after four steps. He sounds like an inbred dimwit. He sounds like he's dropping kids off at the pool. Mothers never run and take off without their baby like this unless they've been trained to through punishment. Since when does rocks fall down from trees? This is a clip of before she was trained to leave Lucy behind. She doesn't run off without her. This is how I know that something is happening to cause her behavior to change.
They said there was a kidnapper, but if you slow down the video at its slowest speed, you will see why they're really running and instead they're protecting. I think this was very shortly after Lucy was born. Luna was so exhausted. It is my belief that they kept wanting Luna to be in the water so she'd swim with a newborn baby. I also believe they were tossing this infant toy into the water as it resembles the shape of a cookie. But I don't believe that was the only tactic they used on Luna that day. I believe this fake cookie was a big reason why the monkeys fought with each other a lot at this time and because this pool is right next, or within, the Amber Troop. First notice Luna eagerly runs out of the water, the video cuts and bam, she's back into the water. Luna. Notice Luna heads out of the water again, another cut and notice Luna's behavior change. She no longer wants to breastfeed, her eyes are dodging everywhere and she no longer seems semi-relaxed. <laughs> when a macaque bears their teeth, it often looks like a smile, but it's actually a facial expression for submission and fear. Again a cut in the video, and again back in the water. <laughs> this same pattern happens several times throughout the video. Only one time did I actually see her get in the water on her own, and it was only once the VOs started to raise their voices. Luna is making her way across the other side of the pond. But look at the reflection in the water, a VO gets directly in front of her, and prevents her from getting out of the water, so she sees him and turns back around. When she is finally allowed to get out of the water, you can tell here she's exhausted and still she can't rest. <laughs> Here's clips of that infant toy, shaped like a cookie, I spoke about earlier. In this next clip, below where I hide the watermark, you will see Rainbow, she disappears and then you see her unnaturally reappear. I believe a VO tossed her back to be with this group. This will happen more than once. You will also notice a behavior change in these monkeys. This is not a relaxed state. They are in high alert and their eyes are dodging around as they see something we can't see behind the camera. You will hear a VO call Rainbow, then you will hear Rainbow in the background. VOs lay there, and monkeys turn around. Slowing this one down so you can clearly see the facial expressions and hear the sounds of slings. 
You will see the bared teeth like smile from Rainbow that I spoke about earlier. <laughs> These nips and bites and pulls are a protection measure to get the baby to comply. Something is causing both mom and baby to have fear. With human interference, Libby's babies do not cling when they should. Instead they lay on the ground, protecting their vital organs from harm's way, instead of holding onto mom and letting her run away. Because macaques are not bipedal, they need all fours to walk. They can take a few steps bipedal but that's it, this is where the dragging comes in place. If the baby will not hold on, then Libby does her best to grab and walk with the baby. Sling. More sling. Vio's leg. Because I have shown it so many times, you can tell Whoa. if Vio has a stick they're poking Libby with. In my opinion this human interference is prohibiting these mothers from taking care of their babies. I have shown so much evidence of this. If it isn't obvious to you that it's happening, it should be by now. In this next clip you will see Rainbow. The reason I am showing this clip is because the VO said Luna was the reason Rainbow was scared. However, you will see Rainbow's eyes and they don't even look towards Luna. She is startled by something we can't see on the right, and Luna comes to her aid once she hears Rainbow panic. This is an example on why these VOs cannot be trusted. This is why fingers are pointed at them. They lie more often than they tell the truth. Too often they blame their own actions on other monkeys, or use the repeated same small list of reasons why these monkeys have injuries or go missing. Injuries that don't match the said cause. Injuries, they so happen to not get on video, when there's a huge group of them there and cameras filming from morning to night.
My channel is almost a year old. In this short time, this is how many monkeys in the Savannah troop that has had eye injuries and the various reasons that I can remember, we were told caused them. I may even be accidentally leaving some out. Notice most have no other markings, if they do have markings it's almost always crescent moon shaped. Notice the cause doesn't match the injury and how frequently they use the same causes. Notice how most of these are the same eye. This troop gets more eye injuries than any other troop. In my opinion, that's not a coincidence. To be clear, I am not saying all of these were for sure caused by the VOs. It is my opinion that many of these incidences were suspicious based on what we were told or not told. It is my opinion that this many monkeys with very similar injuries, this often, is unlikely to be a natural occurrence. It's my opinion that it doesn't match a normal pattern of behavior. What I mean by normal pattern of behavior is that, that these macaques are fairly peaceful animals. They are not the most aggressive species of macaques. They don't enjoy fighting with each other. They would rather keep peace. Conflicts are usually dominance-driven, often towards food or mating rights. These quarrels amongst members of higher and lower-ranking troop members can leave minor injuries such as some of these. But after they take social measures to continue living harmoniously, when macaques attack one another, there are key areas where they target if they so happen to have the goal to protect, defend and harm if they need to. Those areas are typically eyes, toes, feet, hands, fingers, mouth and genitals. Those are the most detrimental areas that macaques need to survive. They protect their organs by laying on the ground, and so these appendages become a target. Now we see these eye injuries and some look like maybe they received a nip from another monkey as we see a small scratch that could be from another juvenile or female's tooth. Now if we were to assume that another monkey caused these injuries, the VOs are still very much at fault. Feeding monkeys out of turn, choosing who to feed, breaking up conflicts, separating the ones that are bonded and pairing them others that they're typically not socializing with, all of these kinds of human interference can cause primates to have conflicts with each other and therefore, minor injuries can occur. This means some of these injuries could have been indirectly the VO's fault, in my opinion. When they're saying a juvenile monkey, who has fully developed strength and climbing skills is said to have fell from a tree and this is their only injury, such as Angela here, where all we see is a puffy eye, no scratches, no open wounds, no issues with her limbs, no bump on the head, 
No other injuries whatsoever that would match falling from a high distance than this to me seems caused by humans. I'm not at all convinced she fell from a tree, I'm not the only one that sees it this way, and when we're not convinced, they often change the story, they then say she was attacked. Same scenario happened with Rainbow. Fell from a tree and then attacked, but with Rainbow, by a big male. These are not injuries big males can cause, they cause much worse, because of their large canines. The injuries that monkeys cause on one another is often puncture wounds from their teeth and other teeth markings like slicing or tearing of the skin. From what I have observed, rarely is an eye injury the only injury, and if it is, usually with multiple open wounds in or surrounding the eye. Eye injuries aren't rare themselves as they are a common injury and target. However, they also are not an easy injury to give, coming from another monkey. Nor is it that frequent of a phenomenon such as what we see in this troop. Now let me mention this real quick. I'm sure I'll rant about this more another time, because to me, it's so ridiculous. But, some people don't like me calling the monkeys in Savannah a troop. By definition, the primatology term is a group of primates that live together. Not all troops are the same, even in the wild. There doesn't need to be a perfect dynamic that defines them as a troop. Therefore, just a group of even three monkeys living together is still a troop. Whether to call it a troop or group is semantics. I'll just give the longest eye roll and continue to use the word troop and do what I want for my channel. I'm going with the proper terminology. Please don't come at me for using the word troop when the word group is literally in its definition. Call it a group if you choose. But you won't see me piss in your noodles over it. Thank you. You can see sling responses and noises as this monkey is trying to protect Lucy. Yeah. Listen to the background. I didn't make that cut in this video and look at their behavior change. Luna is nipping at Rainbow as a protective measure. Watch Rainbow as she looks up. Replay in slow mode. Listen, the VO does this on purpose. Lisa sees this VO as an aggressor, she's trying to protect Lucy from him. All just to make Lisa look mean. If only all the moms in Savannah were like Katrina. 
She warns the Vios when Kenzo gets close to them and she keeps him close with her. It's my opinion that they instead target Luna, Libby, and soon Joyce as they are easier to control, abuse and manipulate. It seems that the nicer the monkey is towards humans, the worse the treatment of them. The more they use them to lie to their audience as them being abusive mothers, while they're actually the cause of why their behavior is seemingly neglectful. Women specifically, should ask themselves that if a threatening object was being pointed at you, would you want to nurse? If that person holding the threatening objects pointed at you and told you not to hold your baby, or else you both get hurt, would you let go? These animals all have motherly instincts and aren't evil. They simply aren't allowed to be the moms they could be if there were no human interference.